It is Christmas Eve, after all. But if this is a dream, then whose dream is it? Sort of statuette between my fingers, and I just think about the, the, the ancientness of the land. My name is Detective Inspector Eamon Moran, and you are all under arrest. You see the descending steps down, deep into the ground of Kingsport. On suspicion of breaking and entering, out of season trapping and animal trafficking. And you realise that what you're looking at is an illusion. If I am their dream and they wake, will I cease to exist? Reloading and trying not to think about the arguments with my dad. Oh, too risky, too risky. It was always German first. And, and holding a picnic without a permit, which is contravening Kingsport food and beverage laws. By the way, the ram is wearing later. And you will come with me this instance, or feel the full force of the law. I wonder, if this is a dream and it's not my dream... Some sort of theatrical bullshit, I don't know. And um, I think about flying and see if I fly. I am the lord of this forest, keeper of the feast. But I don't jump. (laughs) You do not belong here. <laughs> I don't know what happens. I know that they say if you dream about dying, you die in real life. But what happens if you go insane in a lucid dream? <laughs> From the personal journal of Sultan Merriweather, resident of Kingsport, Massachusetts, dated December 1924. On the subject of Eleanor Belvedere and the Belvedere House, What a delightful position it holds in the northern quarter, overlooking the ramshackle and ever-descending rooftops, towers, and wonders of the town of mythic Kingsport. When not swept by rain or hammered by the winds of the Atlantic, Kingsport offers one of the most picturesque views of the south-facing entry of the Block Island estuary, leading ever deeper inland along the Sound to New York with its myriad cultures and temples to fascination. Although we occupy this southern stretch not so rarefied as Providence, perhaps, we do offer a certain something to the visitor, and indeed to the keenest sort of antiquarian. Eleanor Belvedere has a rich and long association with the fine antiques of this town. She has herself purchased and indeed sold many items— I have been encouraged, of course, to approach her on several occasions during my time at the Miskatonic University to inquire about various heirlooms, including one at Newburyport, which has been recently donated to the museum there. It is my intention to visit and request a private study of the gold leaf tiara of strange design which she has provided. Belvedere's have been in this part of the country since the founding fathers. I note that Taplin and Barradale record the name in their illustrious history of the ships that followed the Mayflower, but I can find no confirmation of the name on the official lists of the ships, and so I assume it is an aggrandization, and the family came across in a second or third wave of emigration. The northern branch were associated with Newburyport. The southern branch descended as far as New Orleans, And perhaps descent is the best word we can use to describe that journey? What they were up to is a mystery, but their name is associated with a strange Episcopalian sort of a Christian cult of the kind that drove so many souls to these shores. This enigmatically named the Church of the Stars Prismatic. A chapel is still recorded as being dedicated to the group operating out of Sugar Lake, New Orleans. As for the Northern Group, of whom Eleanor is an able representative and a highly regarded individual in Kingsport society, she herself claims a long lineage back to the Rockport Belvedere's of the 1680s, and indeed there is mention of an Isaiah Belvedere in the village of Beverly, just outside of Salem. What mysteries she may have been provided by her ancestors may never be discovered. It is well known that she prefers the company of children, young people of great beauty, and the occasional European guest. While I count myself as still in the prime of my youth, I would hardly claim the status of a childlike innocence, but I would most willingly engage in the study of her library. I must engage Franklin Quincy by asking whether he knows anything particular regarding her collection. It has been rumored that families going away from the trials of the 1690s were given certain 
unmentionable books bequeathed to the families upon departure from their former Salem parishes. I feel certain that Mrs. Belvedere possesses a number of interesting volumes in her library. Indeed, a rough and much annotated record notes a number of esoteric titles, even including an abridged copy of the Book of Ibon, much valued by collector and academic alike. As for the more fanciful tales that she herself creates potions or charms, as delivered to me by certain individuals, scurrilous gossips, that cannot really be tolerated. But in these my private notes, I feel it is acceptable to make such observations, absurd as that sounds. And yet she does seem the type, being so gathered and covered in layers of crepe and gauze as to remind one of a Civil War widow. Indeed, she is, of course, without her husband, who passed some twenty years since, and who unusually allowed her to keep her own name throughout their union. As for the woman herself, she is described as having a wicked sense of humor and a tendency to favor animal companions, surely grist for the mill to consider that she might be more than simply an old lady, but one would hope a little less than a witch. The Apocalypse Players present Christmas in Kingsport by Oscar Rios Heavily adapted by Joseph Chance Starring Dan Wheeler as Detective Inspector Eamon Peacock Moran I knew I should have bent some money on a new gun but Elsa, Elsa said we needed a new dresser Dominic Allen as Detective Constable Oliver Shakespeare Baines and I begin laughing maniacally and staring at my hands. <laughs> Danan McAleer as Detective Constable Matthew Lefty Eisner. Hey, listen, I don't want to play no fucking games. So I walk over and I kick aside part of the, the ritual circle. And Joseph Chance as your festive keeper of the arcane lore. Well, I, I mean, I, I pull out my thirty-eight and I say, <laughs> and I say, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. So, Baines, you um, uh, you you're sinking down off the side, and the, and what's your Cthulhu mythos again? Three, three. We can do this the easy way. Or the... Somebody told you a story once. Somebody told you a story once that they'd heard about uh, uh, someone in Arkham had been messing around with mathematics and imagining what if you applied certain non-Euclidean principles uh, to the real mm. um, and, and how you would try and find an interface between those two things. And, and it's your relationship to the geography of the house makes you suddenly remember that moment, possibly in a, in a little edge of desperation. Because as you're sort of slipping slowly, like floating down towards, uh, not even the ground actually, it, it, it's the, um, it's it's the roof of the uh, porch that runs around the side of the building that you'd be you'd be floating down onto. No, no, it not, it's not even that yet. You could potentially reach the balcony that is um, on the first floor. You realise that there's something off about the way the rooms kind of seem to be slightly switching, almost like a great hand is turning them, as if it was a model of a house being mm. shifted, and it, it's, it is discombobulating. You don't have to roll sanity for it, but, but now you've clocked it, you begin to become aware that uh, there's that movement around you in this circle, but also in the, in the increasing dark, something about your silver thread that is connecting to this... Um, house is glowing more and more and you see a uh, you see something flying in the dark and another and another moving oh, in an, no. moving in an odd fashion just beyond the house 
In, mm. This is you're looking back behind the house. Where, where first you looked south, now you're looking north into the darkness above the house, effectively. And you see they're very dark. They're very dark. They're, they're entirely black. How big are they? About d- d- disturbingly, about four to five feet tall. And you begin. And they're fl- you, flying. You say flying, and, you, and then you, and you hear a. <laughs> And you realise that they have enormously long tails. Uh-huh. They're flapping and, and swishing. And then you hear more below you. I'm going to make an experimental attempt at <laughs> fireballing them. <laughs> Could you give me a power check? <laughs> <laughs> I think because this went so well in real life. <laughs> I think uh, you've got to try that, right? Got to try. Uh, that's that's a fail on my power. It's seventy over sixty, but um, I don't have loads of luck left. I've got thirty nine luck. Push the roll. Yeah, I'm Push thinking. That's what I'm thinking. I might have the to do. luck. Push, I don't know which one he should do. <laughs> I want to see it succeed, so I wanted to spend the luck. That was quite also, good. See him fail miserably. So. My power is 60, so I've got better than 50 50 odds. Yes. You could almost call it 60 40 odds. Mm. Feels that way, doesn't it? Feels like it. Well, it on paper it seems that way. I'd, when I'm I'd, rolling the dice, push... as I watch the dice rattle down my dice tower, I think there's no chance. Because you don't know the mechanics, and like in some books. In some games, you would know the mechanics. You were like, "Oh well, I don't want to push that." I mean, in that sense, we're sort of applying that. It's like, it doesn't. This this affects how well you get to attempt your lucid dreaming. You you lose your bonus die if you fail your power. You'll gain I a see. bonus die. So like, it's, it's something's going to happen either way. I'm not I'm not going to abandon you to. Well, in that case, I won't do anything. I'll accept that it's failed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. This is a tenuous idea, and I'm perhaps... Well, I, it, perhaps it hasn't my, my It hasn't Well, failed. no, but perhaps my lack of... Uh, my, my, my uncertainty gives me a lack of confidence in the execution, and I, uh, I, I sort of... I'm a bit too tentative, perhaps. Uh, so you're not even going to try your lucid dreaming? No, I'm going to try it. Yeah, OK. But Good. maybe that explains why I uh, don't get this bonus done. Yeah, yeah. It certainly does. There's, I'm self-doubting even as I do it. Mm. I've only barely just managed to get off the ground, and I'm not great at flying yet, so... <laughs> Here we go. Kaplow! Oh, why, it's, oh, it's close enough for me to do it, I think. It's 27 over 19. Uh, Ooh, yes, <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. too... I, I, I had fireball mm. something. Mm. It's so exciting. I'm going to spend <laughs> the luck. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> How big a fireball are you going to go for? Well, as big as I can go. <laughs> um, a regular success fireball. Uh, well, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, a regular success fireball. <laughs> uh, a narrow regular success in, fireball. In his imagination... What's, what's, what's his 30, his... Hang on, what's, the, what's, what's 27 minus 19? Eight. That's eight. Okay. Eight points of luck have been spent. Uh, yes, carry on. In, in his imagination, uh, is is the fire from somewhere? Is it based on a fire that he's seen flying, or is it based purely on uh, the fancy of his mind's eye? It's yeah. It's based on most of the stuff he's read in sort of Conan stories. Um, right. So, uh, yeah. So. Yeah. He puts his hands together and he imagines a small sort of sun, like a miniature sun, forming in between them that then shoots at incredibly high velocity. Um, and, and grows in size? Potentially, yes. Uh, and becomes more ragged around yeah, the edges. But it's a, as it but burns it is a missile. the air around it. It is a missile. Yeah. As it burns up all the oxygen. Um, OK, yeah, so I think you're casting something that has the capacity... Between one and three uh, strength. What are you putting into it? Are you going to put all three in? Or are you just. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, you feel like you have a degree of control over them. Okay, so that will be three of your magic points, please. Fantastic. Oh. oh. Wow. Merry Christmas. Yeah, right. Wow. It's a little naughty. Ho, ho, fucking ho. It's. 
It's like some sort of magical... Mm. I've dialed this adventure down massively. <laughs> Missile. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> what, what? What Rios writes is very... Well, I mean, it is... Yeah, this is still from his world, so... But just different. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so it's a three-point magic missile <laughs> fireball. Right. Um, and you, Bang! And, and you're firing it basically at the heart of these three things approaching from above. Yeah. And they are the closest, so... Um, uh, great. So this it, it leaves this trail behind, and it's smoking and sizzling and burning, and you can still see this sun glowing intensely, and it, and it flies up towards them, and you see two of them manage to react and kind of break off the formation, but the other one kind of f- freezes long enough for you to actually see its face, or I should say its facelessness for the mm. first time. You see a black, if only they almost, almost sort of pearlescent surface yeah. uh, and so. curving horns. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, this tail and these long bat-like wings. And it, and it, and it hovers there a second too long as it looks at you. And you think it, you hear a kind of... Uh, less like a goat, more like a demon. But possibly somewhere between those two. Uh, you do think about the bipedal nature of the thing that you saw. Mm. Or that you didn't see. That concertinaed mm. a chauffeur back in the reel. But at that mm. point, this thing hits it. And you hear this awful scream. Uh, uh, and, and it starts to sink down, plummeting down like a comet into the snow below. <laughs> and, and I begin laughing maniacally. Yeah, quite right. Staring too. at my hands. Quite right too. <laughs> great, great. Um, gain one lucid dreaming. Fantastic. Um, roll sanity. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yes. I should, I should look this up. I should have known what this Would was. you believe it? A success. Yes, nice. But I think you still lose one for seeing this this gaunt, Ooh, close this gaunt, the danger zone. This gaunt figure of the night. It seems to be made of you will. night. And well, terror. at least if he loses, if he has, goes mad now, at least he's got the power to kill everyone with fireballs. So mm. Could be worse. Uh, but you do gain um, ninety-eight Cthulhu mythos. S- points. Sadly, only one Cthulhu mythos. Uh, and what, you, you guys didn't play the game. No, there's a there's a game I ran where at the end of it, <laughs> it's a one shot. <laughs> at the end of it, you have the opportunity to stumble upon some knowledge, potentially, if you choose to. And if you do, you get 100 Cthulhu Mythos. <laughs> <laughs> it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. You open this door and it's Inst- like, yeah, I want the knowledge. <laughs> it's like... Aah! Face melts. <laughs> the Ark of the Covenant, yeah. <laughs> like opening the air, the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, it's the good old days. It's the good old days. I love all that shit. Amazing. It's incremental yeah. shit that we have to go through now. Because uh, <laughs> we like it too much. Um, yeah, so... Y- this 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 thing drops and sizzles and burns and a few others skitter in you, uh, but wait, you just for a split second, you one tail touches the back of your thigh, <gasps> um, and you feel this awful <laughs> tickling sensation, yeah. sort of shivers up your back, horror, and, and you find yourself intuitively flying back up. Whoa! Why are you fools? <laughs> Um, it is the Balrog's tail wrapping around Gandalf's <laughs> leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't sort of hold you at that point. Uh, although I'm going to give you this, Dom. You do get this as the player. Baines gets the distinct impression that there are more of these things and they are somehow aware of you now. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously they're not. They're aware of you now because you just shot a fireball at one of them. You just shot. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that means I can do it again. You've announced your presence. Yeah. <laughs> the silver line is really strong, and you are cautious about it. But you can see another line beginning to develop, which you weren't so aware of because it seems to be going a much greater distance, uh, and it's going back towards your home. You realise. Oh, how odd. Uh, I mean, obviously you. Don't see it go all that direction, but it just occurs to you in 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 this great uh, moment of increased knowledge of the well, the realm of the dream. So, Eisner, what would you like to do? So, I've just read through this thing. Yep. 
I'm also like compared to the other two I think I've probably seen a lot less so I need to not get carried away by that I need to explore the top level of this house I think the first thing I might do is go over to where the blood stained handprint is on the open window mm. shotgun at the ready and just like lift it up further mm. like throw it up and see if there's anything out on the roof that I can see well the first thing I can tell you is that the, those fingers are very long they're not like a normal human being's fingers Oh. Uh, which is disconcerting, but you've been through enough casual disconcerting shit for today. Uh, that doesn't mean yeah. it's anti check, but y- you're pretty sure as well that you can see claw marks, quite deep claw marks. Mm. Uh, my my initial my, my my brain skips back to my initial cougar theory, but then I think it's holding less and less. A <laughs> cougars don't open windows. B I've just seen a fucking rat wearing trousers fly through a jelly door. So yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I still think I, with the shotgun in one hand, sort of c- hooked under my el- under my shoulder. Yeah, I, th- I throw up the window. Nice, and the well, cool, a cool breeze comes in, little spin drift of snow. Uh, the sun is down in that moment, almost perfectly. Uh, the last of the sun's rays drops, and you get that kind of beautiful peach red, blue to the west, but then the dark is approaching. Um, you can see that light. You can see the moonlight now on the water. And it's in exactly that spot where the golden jetty was. Yeah. And could you give me a spot I hidden? Think, yeah. There's something that immediately makes me think of as well. But, uh, yeah. Mm. Um, that's a 73, so I think that's a fail. It's a fail, isn't it? Yep. Spot hidden, 55, yeah. It's too much to spend the luck on, I think. It's a beautiful view. And there's something about that spot where the jetty was, in, in both in your dream and now in reality, the, the light on it. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, but yes, you can see um, a couple of footprints in the snow. I think I think in that moment, I do I do, I do think back to... Uh, if, if, if there's a moment where I just look at the Golden Sea... I think back to Taxa Pixwa, what she was saying to me in my dream, the last dream I had a couple of nights ago, which had been getting more and more vivid. You know, I've seen this other Kingsport and this, you know, the idea of being able to walk freely if masked. And I don't know, there's all these things she said to me that a, a dream was coming. It was going to change things on land. And I always found it unsettling in the dream, but I think I never questioned her in life. And uh, there's something about seeing the sea glowing that calms me and makes me think of her and sort of steals me to maybe go through the rest of the this top room, maybe being less scared mm-hmm. of things that are masked. Or it, maybe it's enough to... to to get that tracking eye of yours back on the prize and, and you realise a, a little conundrum is solved maybe with the coolness that you've found there. I mean, coolness is the wrong word, but the kind of the contained... Serenity. Capacity, the serenity you've found. An element you to realize serenity. There's a group of tracks that lead down, which are slightly older, and then a group of tracks that lead up, which are fresher. Uh, but then you can see below onto the, um, onto the balcony and by leaning all the way out carefully. You can see the balcony has similar tracks... And the porch has a, has a sequence of tracks on it, backwards and forwards, uh, where this thing, let's call yeah. it, has been going up and down. Mm. Something's running up and down through, the side. Through this window. Yeah. In which case, I uh, slam the window closed. Mm. And I want to see if I can secure it. Secure it. Well, you could you can lock it. Yeah, you can lock it. It was unlocked. Yeah, I, I lock it. Yeah. Um, you could, and then you I could wanted... jam the. What's your mechanical repair like? Oh, let's have a look. I think it might be better than usual. Uh, mechanical repair thirty five. I can give it a go. Do you want me to roll it? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to give you the idea for free because it's like pressed for time, and you said you want to secure it. Okay. I mean, locking yeah, is one yeah. thing, but you could jam the lock. So yeah, it has to basically yeah. smash the window, which at least means you'd hear something going. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I wanted to do. So Obviously, it would mean possibly you would have to smash the window if you needed to get out this way. But. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
But I'm a police officer. I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> and there are other so smaller windows. Fine. There are other yeah, smaller yeah. windows, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. But this so one seems I, to be I, a favourite. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of footprints and a bloody handprints. You, you're just getting this intense sense that it was this place that... I just want to, I want to put a stop to whatever this nonsense is that's been going on here. Give us a mechanical repair, and I'll stay with you for a little bit longer. Yeah. Let's go. So... Uh, oh, yeah, 17 on a 35. Nice. So that's just a hard success. You jam a, you jam a convenient um, uh, letter opener in. Yeah. And ruining, the, ruining the lock and the latch, but holding the thing there so that you can't, yeah. just, you can't just flick it. And, and yeah. to get the, the, the yeah, so you, you fiddle away. I'm big on my locks. I know, I know it's yeah. made it pretty much impossible now. You think, yeah. you, you think you hear a dull sense of shouting downstairs? Baines is totally out. He's still in the recovery position, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. You think you hear some shouting for a moment downstairs. Maybe that, that could be that could be Moran's voice. Moran. Does it sound panicked or does it sound... Uh... Uh, it sounds authoritative, but it's, it's hard to say. It's, it's like... Yeah. I've got no idea what, where I am, what's going on, but might he have heard my whistle or is that unlikely? Um... I was sort of imagining... Is that a listen roll? <laughs> a whistle roll? I was sort of imagining that's that's about to follow. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm sort of imagining ah, he's, I... at the, he's at the point where... You're just remonstrating. He's been, you've delivered your first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I was fully yeah, prepared yeah. for you to yeah. say, no, he doesn't yeah. hear the whistle, but no, I think... you're not in the same place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think there's more sort of... It's, you get this weird sensation it's a long way off. It's yeah. much further than just two floors down. Yeah. But mm-hmm. but Moran's kind of an odd character. He could be yelling into the fireplace again like uh, he did yeah. on that that, that policeman's <laughs> Very ball. True. Very true. It wasn't much of a ball. It was basically a lot of cops standing around in a room getting drunk. Yeah, I respect the guy and I kind of... I fear him in a sense, mm-hmm. but... Uh, you know, in a respectful way, but I also I know he likes his fucking he love he loves the whiskey. He drinks mm. that shit like water. So, yeah. uh, you know, either way, I think this top room, I I've got a sense of how big it is. It ain't the, big. The only thing you haven't checked is the other door. Well, you haven't exactly. actually tried the door. Well, I'm not trying the fucking door. That you're the not touching the weird through. door. Do you want to do you want to no, try the other that. door? Yeah. Um, that door opens. Oh uh, yeah, uh, and and there's a lovely bedroom with a, a man and a woman sleeping together in it. What the fuck? They seem to be deeply, deeply asleep. Uh, and the only thing that you can see uh. that is slightly odd is that there there's a ring of there's a circle around the bed uh, in a sort of um, ritual pattern, shall we say? Mm. Uh, it runs under the bed, one would assume. I mean, you can't quite tell. Yeah. Uh, which seems to be made of stones and bits of pine tree and um, a little bit of sand, um, a, few, a few odd um, bits and bobs. Yeah. A couple of nails, the... you notice. Yeah. I think I'm quite shocked by the fact that... Uh, do they? Can I see them breathing? That's yeah, my they're, they're shallow, like Banes. They're shallow. And yeah, deep. yeah. Um, and do rather, I recognize She's you? rather attractive. Uh, he... Uh, they're both in... You say they're both in their 40s. Yeah. Do, do I recognize either of them? I, no. I assume not. No. no. And anything else, if I do a quick sweep of the room, is there anything else that... There's, some, pers- there's some personal come? items. Um, yeah. And I think you quickly come up with uh, the... The personal effects of your first two names in the journal. Mm. Uh, this is Catherine and Nathaniel Lear. Ah, uh, Kitty. Yeah, uh, they are kitty. husband and wife, and you can see a wedding ring on the woman's finger. Um, mm. uh, Good. The, Nathaniel <laughs> is blonde. Yeah. And Kitty uh, is dark-haired. Uh, I start thinking about. Uh... Yeah, that letter. Uh, Jesus, it's them. Uh, well, that means their kids must be here somewhere, right? You say out loud. Yeah. Uh, and at that point, you hear, Oh, yes, of course they are. They're in the room behind you. <laughs> Where the fuck's their voice coming from? Right behind you. Oh, fuck. So, Moran. 
Yes. Are you alive? <laughs> Do we wish to stay? Or and brings the sword out. Must I take your head for the festival? <laughs> mm. <laughs> um. Is he is he within striking range? He's still at the other end of the table, right? He brings his face horrifically close to you in, in a speed that defies celerity and says, Would you like to play a game? Uh, Could I do a psychology check on this character? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm interested in anything you can tell me, but specifically... Do I recognise him as a type? Like, is he... Is this is this a sort of, like, bravado you get from a sort of underworld boss, you know? Or is it more of the crazed mania of someone who's escaped from the asylum? <laughs> These are both excellent uh, places to start. <laughs> uh, <laughs> both. <laughs> I've failed that by 12, but my luck... I've got so much luck and I haven't spent any yet. I'm just going to spend some luck. Yeah, I'm going to spend 12 points of luck to pass. That's what we like. Yes. You've sort of started on those two, and this sometimes happens to you these days. It's like it's not that your instinct's off, it's that you have to work so damn hard hmm. to, to remember all of it, all of the people. It's been going on so long now, it's ever since the kids. Like before hmm. that, your instincts were often, if it wasn't the first idea, it was nearly always the second. And that meant you could swing the club much faster, much sooner with greater confidence. Yep. And you can clear rooms much more confidently and sleep better at night. And now you have to do all of this stuff where you're making sure that your wife's looking after them okay, which means that you have to look after your wife okay, which means you have to pamper her more than you really want to. And it's <laughs> so exhausting. It's just a mental it's load. A mental load. <laughs> and then sometimes she has the tenacity, the tenacity, the temerity... To, to suggest that she thinks of everything and she does all of the food and all of the cleaning and all of the... I mean, it's not like she makes any money, is it? <laughs> it's like, you're the one out there, man. You're the one making the fucking money. Uh, yeah. And all of that runs through your head and, you, and you're slightly aware that also you don't have the full picture there either and you're thinking, but they're all just my first instincts about that and I'm beginning to realise maybe actually she's making a really good point and you don't do anything to do with that. And then, you've seen her hands lately, and and they're raw. She were even though you've got a maid, thanks to your money. That's right. Her hands are raw. She's working all of the time, and it didn't used to be like that. They're a handful, though. The kids are a handful. And then it comes to you. There was that time that you went down to the dancing bar, and there were some actors coming through town. They were actually on their way back up to Boston to take the boat back to England. It was, they were a touring group, and there was a big old British actor among them, and that's when you realise this guy reminds you of him. He reminds you of a sort of... There was the, Byron Bassett. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that his name? Hello! Was that his name? Yeah. And it's sort of this... Byron Bassett. This big show. And that guy was... I mean, he just sat at the bar and just kept drinking, telling stories, and it, and, and it was all a big show. But underneath it, you kind of realise that he really believed in his persona, that guy, to the extent where he wasn't. I mean, he was just living that character. My favourite thing about my wife is she never cleans her snatch. <laughs> that was one of his stories, wasn't it? <laughs> Definitely was. Yeah, I remember it. Anyway, his, his, his face is right next to you and you see the sword arm sort of sweeping back along the line of the floor. Okay, right. And it looks, in that moment, he looks like he really knows what he's doing. Ermin, guard my wife. And I tell you what, because of that success and the, and the luck spent <laughs> and the insight, as you go, that guy was kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. The guy you met in the bar. And this, so this guy, I'm getting that. And by kind of crazy, you mean just the right side of totally committed to an act that, that, that may not be understandable. And he could just try and ch chop your head off. Because he thinks that's the game. Okay, what? What I'd like to do is. Um, I'm not quite sure what this would be. You know, if you in in um in a combat situation, you can take a turn to aim a gun. Can I do a similar sort of thing, um, like but in hand to hand or like for a manoeuvre? Can I prep myself? Prep myself for a dodge. 
Is there is there is there a, if there isn't a, a mechanic to do that, then I, I think something else. But squat. I, f- I feel like you're in that, that you're in that moment where you've got the you know, sort of you've got the drop. So you could try and swing the shillelagh and run. Uh, I, I'd 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 give you that. But if you're going to literally see if you can dodge this guy swinging a blade, which is what you think he's about to do. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I, I, um, yeah, yeah. I'll give you a bonus die for your dodge. <laughs> I mean, I hear you telling me that that's a bad idea, but um, <laughs> I mean, I've just checked my dodge. It's not great. <laughs> I uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, if your dodge isn't fifty percent, I, I I probably wouldn't. Yeah. <sighs> Fucking hell! Do I? Can I roll my dreamlands? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, no, that's... Uh, I mean, I was never going to pass it, but I'm nowhere near. And actually, because of your excellent psychological understanding of him, I will give you a bonus die. <laughs> so you can have another shot. OK. No, no, no good. Um, it's a shame. Thank you, though. <laughs> OK, right, I think in this instance, discretion is the better part of valour. And I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to run back to where I mm-hmm. think the door is. Yeah, yeah. You're just going to sprint. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, fucking hell. Sorry, my brain's not operating properly today. No, I mean, you, I mean, you guys are in a you're you're in a hell of a house. So yeah. Uh, and you did a very interesting thing where you went to the other door and you and you pushed away and all that stuff. So, so I think the whole point of impossible geometry and things like that is that your brain operating properly is an enemy anyway. Yeah. I think you're doing terribly well. <laughs> could you could you could you give me a power check if you if you're on that yeah, dash? My, my gun is drawn. Um, by the way, so uh, I don't necessarily want to go out of it, but I want to run to it. Mm. So that at least I've got something uh, believable behind me. <sighs> I failed my power check. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. So um, you start to run, and and the same thing that happened with the table getting along, the distance between the table and the door begins to span out oh, Christ. and so as you're running it gets further and further and it looks like it's going further away from you which is terrifying but what it does make you very very aware of is a golden book on the bookshelf which is glimmering just sort of three shelves in uh, on the side of the door side right okay near the door but I'm not getting any closer to it uh, oh you're getting closer it's just the distance to run is getting further away so it's, you are moving but your gain is not as much as you would have liked. I mean, normally you would have been there by now, but but instead right. you're halfway through the distance. And you, but am I getting further away from the table at the same time? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. You, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the main yeah. thing. But you hear this. He's running from me. And and uh, uh, the sound of great blade being thrown through the air. Oh, shit. Well, now I'd like to dodge. <laughs> yeah. Were you going to go left or right? Um, go towards the golden book, surely. Left is towards the golden book. Right is towards the cowering figure of, of the ram, who's sort of on the floor, smearing blood off his nose. <laughs> I'd go towards the ram. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I'd like to dive towards the ram so I can see if I can grab the ram and use it as a human shield. As a sheep shield. <laughs> but I mean, I know I'm not going to get there before the sword hits me. But ma- mainly I want to make a, a very big evasive manoeuvre assuming that this guy is good at his aim yeah. I'm going to go off the course of where I'm currently running. Yeah. Diving to the floor. Lovely. Mm. I like it. And my dodge. Oh. Uh, you can spend luck. It's a huge amount of luck. But I don't want to get. How, how badly? How badly have you failed? Well, it's just a regular fail. But it's. But I. But I would have to. Spend it's not, a huge... it's not like, you've not rolled like a ninety. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He won't just nip you anyway. You were running before he swung. Yeah, he, he's missed anyway. So ah, okay. You, well, then I won't spend any. You, luck. Your <laughs> your athletic um, attempt does turn into rather more of, a, of an ugly forward roll with a bag bump on your head. And yeah. I'm not going to say you lose a hit point, but you do lose a bit of confidence, and some of that confidence you had is wiped out. Uh, yeah. but you're sort of next to the ram, who sort of, he's scrabbling away from you in horror, 
uh, with his later hosen, <laughs> giving him um, no purchase. Uh, and the sword lands in the earth. Uh, and you hear a... <laughs> of the keeper of the feast running behind you. Can I? Am I close enough to the ram to, to grab it and pull it in front of me, like as a sort of hostage situation? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you are. <laughs> That's what I would like to do. Yeah. And you're reminded of that time down the alleyway that you saw um, Blakowski try and take out that guy who was holding the old fella hostage. Blakowski retired shortly after, shortly after this. Um, and Blakowski said, let the old fella go. Let the old fella go or I'll shoot. Uh, uh, and the juve punk said, oh, no way, you're not going to shoot, pal. And he shot, and Bukowski killed both men. Uh, and you're oh. distinctly reminded of that moment. That is very Bukowski. Mm. Um, but you've got him, and you get the shillelagh up, and you can see this massive figure charging towards you. Oh, I think I think the shillelagh's gone. I think I'm I'm. It's the thirty-eight that I'm I've holding. It's, it's on your wrist anyway, right? Fine. So you just drop yeah. it, and you've still got it if you need it. So you just pull it up. You're used to that manoeuvre. You can swing it around a fair bit. You're quite skilled. In that. Great. Okay, so you're in that zone. Mm. Baines, mm. Uh, flying up as you are, you you see the little creature. At the, I say little. I mean it's, like it's nearly two foot long. It's it's you know. It's, it's decent length, and this kind of weird, sort of circular or oval, white face with black detail eyes, and this, this just kind of a face with kind of drawn-in teeth. And it looks at you, and it goes, <laughs> and then it drops down. Quite, I say drops. It sort of slides down, and you get the distinct sense that it's going back through into the reel. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> But I didn't see. I didn't see what was under the mask. No, you didn't. Perhaps, thankfully. I want to see if <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use some cartoon logic here. <laughs> I want to see. <laughs> this is like that role-playing game Toon. You ever played Toon? Yeah, yeah. I never have. No, sounds <laughs> tense. Yeah, um, I think we should give it a go. I've been trying to think about what maybe you could do a dark Toon. <laughs> Which is partly where mm. I've got some of this. Thing. Yeah. By the way, I made a mistake. I should have also given you um, uh, plus one power as well. Your oh, successful, great! Successful uh, spell casting. Fantastic. Uh, well, what I do is I whip my belt off and imagine it turning into a lasso, and I try and <laughs> catch the thing <laughs> before okay. it can get away. Oh yeah, yeah, no, brilliant. Um, I did it around the neck. Yeah, yeah. Or the leg. I'll take whatever. I'll take whatever I can get. Uh, give me uh, your power check. <laughs> this is mental. Get out of here, lads. It's mental. I know. I want to. <laughs> and yet I Go to sleep. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is good. That is um, that is an extreme success on my power roll. Okay. Let's have a lucid... Let's have a lucid dreaming check at... Double your lucid dreaming with a bonus die. Ooh. Wow. Mm-hmm. Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, well, the first roll was best. So that was a 30. My lucid dreaming is 20, so that would be 30 on a 40. Nice. Uh, so not a hard success, but a good success. Uh, but a success nonetheless. Correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what, that's what counts. Uh, okay, so... Uh, I think the thing that you're most impressed with is, is you turn this... And Are you transforming the... Are you transforming it into something else, or are you just using it as the belt? Well, I'm assuming that it's quite a distance it's got to cover, yeah, yeah. so I'm so imagining it's sort of stretching out. So lasso, you use the term lasso, yeah. so I think yeah, it, exactly. it becomes this sort of beautifully crafted leather lasso <laughs> uh, as it sort of extends out of your hand. Um, it, it even has a sort of... I know. Yeah, of course. It has a little silver cap on the top, which has your uh, initials on uh, at the bottom, <laughs> matching the ones on your satchel. Of course. Um, and and you flick it to your astonishment through the wall of the house, and you feel it grab, and you, and you hear this, <laughs> and then this, 
And, and the thing kind of just gets... Something has just bitten through with multiple mouths. Your your leather thread. Uh, and as you pull it out, you see this ichor dripping off the end of the lasso. But you still have a Dreamland's lasso now. Fantastic. With my initials, which are <laughs> Oliver Randolph Baines. Mm. Orb. 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 And I realise in that moment, this new reality that I that I inhabit requires a new persona. And so I say to myself, <laughs> I shall call myself Orb. And, and, then, um, it, and then it happens. <laughs> Orb Weaver. <laughs> just describe how your appearance changes. Um... Oh gosh! Well, first of all, I say my I am Orb, scourge of the night gods, and <laughs> just, um, he just he just came up with that from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> scourge of the night gods and rodeo of the m- mouse men. <laughs> uh, and in that moment, I turn into a sort of. I think probably a cowboy. A gaucho. <laughs> it was a ga- it was like- but in black leather, black leather chaps and a big black fedora, little 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 black uh, shades, <clears throat> big black moustache. <laughs> mm. Oh, astonishing. <laughs> Brilliant. Ridiculous. Is, is, uh, are there any details or, or are you like the night gaunts you hunt? <laughs> are, are you black like the night, or are you, you know, inlaid with silver, or is there a? Oh yeah, there's lots of silver detailing. Oh yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah, mm. lots of little you got little... spurs. On your yeah, boots. of course. Yeah, silver spurs. Silver spurs. Um, uh, uh, how does it? And runes, how does it sweep rune in stones you? across the the back of the of the jacket that just says <laughs> orb. <laughs> does it weave, or does it come up in a wave, or does it just sort of envelop you, or do, or do hands come on and? And dress you, or is it? Uh, I think it bursts out of my skin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was always there underneath. Of course it was. Yes. It, and, and now it's come out. Horrific, horrific stuff. Um, this is this is this is Oliver Baines coming out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's a, like a run, stone, stone cow. cow <laughs> It's gone quite oh uh, Lone Ranger, isn't it? Something. Sort of Robert E. Howard meets meets Lovecraft <laughs> in, a, in, in a tough Western take on the Dreamlands. It made sense at the time. It makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I think I think in his imagination he's sort of alluding to his great grandfather, an officer during the Civil War. But uh, it's it's come out cowboy by accident, a sort of uh, manifestation of his true subconscious desires. Um, and and with that, this silver thread towards your home and the one to the to the room below you and to the back hmm. strengthen, and then others begin to sort of jet out of you until you are a prism of of white silver light. Amazing. Uh, coming out in all sorts of directions, reaching, and then anything that's going to the hill suddenly starts to turn green and corrode and starts to just crawl back towards you. Uh, And they all start to die away, and a a massive part of that sort of prism dies in 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 a green, cold gulf, and a stench of death and crawling horror comes across you from from the church oh. uh, and, and then you see them the worms and in your dream from before they were just like earthworms crawling in the distance but, but impossible for their size the size of cars but now you realise they have faces they have names and they are coiling in and around the catacombs of the church digging Defending, searching, guarding. And you see the spiralling figures, more and more of them now, with their flaming torches, coming up and walking towards a tomb, a mausoleum. And the door is open, and they go... Impossibly, they're all going into this mausoleum, one by one. 
you get the impression that if you were to stay there, you would just watch hundreds going into this tiny mausoleum, and then it dawns on you. But of course, it is not a mausoleum. It is an entrance to a deep well in the ground. Uh, could, you give me, so, could you give me a Cthulhu Mythos check? So we got very ligotti all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 I think he likes the festival. He likes the festival, doesn't he? Underground worms. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho. an eight on my Cthulhu Mythos, was that? Yes. I'm going to spend the four points of luck. <laughs> if Baines gets, comes out of this with his sanity... We are. Uh, uh, we're, we're, in, we're in for a treat. He's not going to be winning any raffles anytime soon, I can tell you that. You begin to realise that it is a place of worship still, but the top uh, is the representation of. In the same way that the real is the representation of a, a much greater realm of the dream, which is perhaps mm. where you should be, you're beginning to realise. Or perhaps mm. where you feel more your own self, true self. Mm. Mm. The the church top above the hill is is like a cap that could unscrew, and underneath it lies not just monsters, but gods. <laughs> and the green flame is no accident. This is the place that they used to speak of, where a green flame is hidden. And you always thought that was just a metaphor. It's just a, it's just a kind of description of an alchemical fire. It's the green fire of Hermes Trismegistus. No. Now you see. It's real. The dream lets you see it in a way that doesn't just mm, destroy your, your, your mind. But even still, I am going to need a sanity roll. Ooh. This could destroy my mind. Miraculously, I've passed. Well, probably because you are still dreaming. 28 and a 43. Uh, but with that, you, f- you feel the line to the room below you go hard. Ooh. And you suddenly feel tethered and oh. drawn. As if someone has suddenly found it and is pulling it. Yeah. And you move at immense speed towards the roof, the slate roof. Uh, and just when you think you're about to be broken into pieces, you're pulled straight through the roof into the back left bedroom. And you land on the ground and you're disorientated and you, and you, and you look around and you see before you is the thing that you were tethered to. It's a copy of Mother and Boy, monthly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's a picture of you and your mother in police uniform and it's open by the bed of a witch uh-huh. so we cut back to Eisner you're standing looking you're looking at these two adults and you hear yeah. this you hear this laugh Woo-hoo. <laughs> right behind me right yeah uh, and he said of course, there's children here. They're in the room behind you. Yeah. Was that what the thing said? Yeah. I want to wheel round. Yeah. With my gun raised. Yeah. And he, it, it's there, and he goes, Oh, we got off to the wrong foot. On the wrong foot. To the wrong note, yeah. maybe. Where are the kids? They're safe, sleeping. You fucking pervert rat. Where are they? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm checking they're okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Why are you laughing like that? Oh. Because, well, the guy's got to eat, you know? Eat what? Eat kids? No, the dreams. I just lick them as they go through. But I want to help too. We both do. Who are these two? We both do. But she can't come out. Why, Kitty? He's held us all here. Kitty and Nathaniel. But I can move around. Honestly, honestly, I can move around because I don't come from here. She's got to stay. I'm hers, and she's mine. You see? Who's she? Who's she? Aunt Nora. Huh? Where is she? Don't shoot! Don't shoot! I'm on your side. <laughs> hey, listen. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what or not. I'm gonna shoot. 
Where's that Nora? I think you're lying to me. I think you're, you're gaming with me, don't you? Do you want to play a game? Hey, listen. I don't want to play no fucking games. Tell me about Kitty, Nathaniel, why they sleep. What's that shit around them? They're not important. They're just their parents. Oh, they're not important? So I walk over and I kick aside part of the the ritual circle. Okay. Just give me a power check. Yeah. There it is. I mean, I, I should have maybe done the cult roll, but I have no idea. The damned. Uh, ooh. Okay, yeah, I did just succeed. I got a 49 on a 51 power. So you, you go to kick the... You, you just pull back and you and you go to... Yeah. And you're... And you're just sort of swipe away part of it. And, and yeah. it's, like, it's like you're kicking an iron shell. Oh, fuck. You don't hurt yourself, but you bounce back off it. Oh. You see a sort of glimmering shimmer of the of the pillar oh. that is surrounding right. the bed. They're all like... If they ain't important... They're all like... Why are they... they were all... They're, only I can go through. Show me where the kids are. Oh, okay. So he, he runs over and he goes... He runs straight over Bane's... And kind of looks and, and pours like like a monkey. Like pours at the yeah. at the waistcoat pockets and goes oh, nice. And then goes up to the door handle, swings on the door handle, and opens the door and drops. And you can see the kids there. And each of the beds has circles round. Oh shit! And they look exactly the same, I imagine, or in the same yeah, style. Yeah, very exactly the same style. Uh, All they listen. Sleeping very peacefully. I'm going to wake these kids up. I need to get them out of here. No, you can't do that. I don't think so. Why? Maybe this one can. <laughs> well, maybe you could try. You'd need you'd need a way in. There might be one in the library. Why don't you come down and see the doors? You know the ones. I ain't fucking listening to you, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'll go down. Oh, see, watch me. I'll go. Ha <laughs> ha. And and what? Were well, you bringing me back something that'll help me snap these people out of their sleep? Come down to the doors. And he runs down the stairs. Okay, I sort of follow slowly, but I, I say as I'm going, you fucking try and pull anything, I'll blow your little fucking rat mask off and then we'll see what's under there. <laughs> I mean, you, you you might wonder whether you do need the book. Uh, he might be wrong. You, yeah. He might not know as much as he claims to know. I know, but at the same time, I just kicked that circle of loose rocks around the bed of the adults and yeah. almost broke my foot so well I yeah mm. if, if there's one thing you well learned... he said he's going to bring something up to me right so I think I follow him to the oh no he's, say, he's saying come down he's saying come down to the door oh okay uh, oh I don't know what the fuck I want to do Bane's just in the recovery position the others are all, all those people are sleeping upstairs but I don't seem to be able to get to them I haven't tried the kids sure but I feel like that'll be a waste of time I think my instinct is it'll probably have the same effect hmm. so I think I do go with the mouse uh, yeah yeah tempting the, 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 the monkey the monkey rat the monkey rat thing um, its face be- begins to look more and more like a kind of Japanese theatre mask mm. uh, perhaps less like a cartoon as it, as it begins to engage with you further yeah. and further mm. Uh, and every now and then you think you see one of the uh, one eye just seems to slightly move over as if there's another eye trying to push it aside. Ooh. Um, I, I try but, and yeah, ignore that. It's, it's sort of squatting in front of the, the fire door and says, Nora's in here. Hmm. Hmm. And right. The German's in that one. He fancies himself as Italian eat. Ha ha ha. And she's trapped in the other one. So, what's trapping them? Uh, well, I, I should imagine he is. Be careful. Who's he? You don't want him to come out. I hide when he comes out. I'll decide who I want to come out, thank you. It was the driver he got first. But I feel saddest about the maid. Did you find the maid? No, oh, I didn't find no maid. What happened to the maid? Look below in the parlour. Uh, or if not, that was f- a few days from hence, over. you'll nose her as you go down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll have a look in there in a moment. So, you're saying, uh... Well, what's his name? Uh, fucking Gunther's in there. 
And Nor is in there? The German is in that one, yes. And here is the beautiful one. They call her Melbourne. Right. How do I get through this without getting hurt? She is like a bird of paradise. Ah. But they don't call her that over on the other side. I suddenly have a moment of, like, realisation, and I just shout down the stairs. Um, I just shout down and says, Moran! Moran! Eamon! You there? So, Moran, you, you hear this yell. Moran, Moran, Eamon, are you there? Coming through like it's coming through from, I don't know, a speeding trolley away from you. But you've got this, you've got this ram and the, sh- and the, and the gun pointed it at it. And this guy's just coming and he, he slows a little and then he goes for the sword. He pulls the sword out and says, Ho, ho, hostage. Mm, unexpected move, my friend. A touch of the gamesman after all. <laughs> Well, I fire off. I fire off three shots. Uh, at, at the ram or at him? At him. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see. Good to see. I thought I was having like, to fucking blow his brains. You lost your mind. I feel like it's. I feel like I'm. Yeah. I, I, I'm. I. Uh, <clears throat> I can't help myself, but think. Don't know why I'm thinking of. Thinking of, this, that I have this image in my head of a man dressed all in. All in black with like a Stetson hat, but it, my words come into my head, and I, I think to myself, "Do cowboys dream of arresting sheep?" <laughs> <laughs> Always the same with me. Loosen the hat. Oh shit! Uh, well, um, that's the uh, that's my, the name of the episode, surely. My gun yeah, malfunctions. It, it has to be right now. The gun malfunctions. My gun malfunctions. Oh. With a, with a 100. It sounds like you're all over it. Talk, talk us through it. Uh. <laughs> I imagine that's a good thing, right? So he doesn't... Fire, feel like, I, 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 I pull the trigger and it just clicks and it's jammed and it's done this before. Um, it's done this before and I say, damn it, I, I knew I should have spent some money on a new, a new gun, but... Elsa, Elsa said, "We need a new dresser." And I just, I, I throw the gun at the, um, at the creature in a, in a, in a, at the, at the huge figure in a rage, as I start sort of shuffling backwards towards the door. Nice, uh, beautiful. Uh, so, but you still got the ram with you, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, th- th- this is. Hilarious to the giant. He is holding his sides. He, he pulls at his beard. He leans and his sort of the great tears roll out from his eyes, and they and they drop to the floor. Little fishes come out from the floor, and they laugh too. And then bits of the trees <laughs> bend their arms around, and they've got faces on, and they laugh, and everything's laughing. Uh, the golden book falls out of the shelf and tumbles and bounces in front of you and is not laughing. Its face looks at you with deadly seriousness, and it is the face of a beautiful young woman from your dreams. Is it Powers? No, no, it's the woman from your dreams. Is it Lucy Powell? Is it your wife? Is it your daughter? Is it Grania? I think it may be my mother. It's your mother. Marie. Poor Marie. And I've been edging that way towards the door and but fortuitously I've thrown the gun and I've got a free hand and I just reach down and touch the book just touch the face yeah it's a book the face goes it disappears it's a golden um, beautifully bound golden book my one question is what are you doing with the ram are you keeping him all the time uh, it's, uh, currently yeah, I yeah. still Do you, you've got not. the book in your hand it's beautifully bound quite slim now I mean I don't know whether I'm still being clo- whether he's still closing down on me, the massive giant. Um, well, actually, yes. I th- whether think at I- that point he abruptly stops laughing and says, "Time to take your head," and pulls up his sword. He's left-handed, uh, and he pulls the sword up and he starts running towards you. Uh, and he he reminds you uh, of he reminds you, Dan, of David Acton. 
at that point. <laughs> He's suddenly incredibly athletic for a man of his age and build. And, yep. and there is going to be no stopping him. Am I close enough to the door? And is, is the door still open from where I sort of barged it open? You smashed the door off its hinges. Of course I did. Well, I would like to... I would like to try and back out the door. With the ram? If I can, still holding the ram and the book. Yeah, you do. Great, OK. Uh, could you give me a dexterity check? Oh, not great. Ha! Ah, that's an extreme success on my dex. Awesome. For a minute I thought it was another 100, but uh, it's a, it's so a you, zero 9. You keep hold of both of them. And you and you work your way back like 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 a defender in in the in the Cork Kalani uh, Shillelagh final hurling championship. championship. Oh yeah, it's not Shillelagh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, the footwork is divine. Kalani, you're having a laugh. Yeah, you're having a laugh, mate. Uh, it's easy. Cork would win that, wouldn't they? Um, uh, you pull this guy through back into the hallway, and as you do so, he begins to fall to pieces. And you hear this... <laughs> and then he's just dead and gone. He just got, crumbles to dust and filth. The ram. The ram, yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, and you uh, see the room begins to turn into a library. A cold, empty library. Wow. And the moment, Basically the moment you cross the threshold back. And the thing that's mm. crumbled into dust... And, and filth. Did I... And... F- Filth was it? Did it? Was it a ram until it was dust and filth, yes. or did it transform into anything else? No. It just was a ram before that. It was a ram, and now it's a pile of yeah, offal and and dust and filth. Oh, but some offal, so it clearly was once a living thing. It's not like it appears to have been. Yeah, wasn't a figment. No. Oh, that's so much worse. Give me a sanity check. Yeah, I think so. Because I think you. are Questioning what the reality is. Oh dear! Well, that's a fail. Mm. It's only two. It's getting pretty close, though, to be honest. Uh, and I think you gain uh, one Dreamlands knowledge. Knowledge, Dreamlands. Uh, but the book has not crumbled to dust. It is called Dreams and Other Fire. It is anonymous. Mm. It appears to be a beautifully printed book um, in the style of the Victorian, the height of the Victorian um, printing period. Well, I I, I shove it deep inside one of my pockets and realise when I put it in that my hip flask is in there, mm. hip flask with the good oh, stuff, yeah. and I take it out, and now I do drain it. Yeah. And I'm not going to let you stop me. No, I don't, I'm I draining don't want it. you to stop. <laughs> I want you to roll your drink alcohol skill. The grand so finale to come. Yeah, that's, oh, a, yeah. that's a regular yeah. success. Awesome. Okay, so for the, for, for the next number of rounds that I have rolled in the background, you will gain plus ten constitution. Okay. You can forget about any hit points you've lost. I don't think you technically had them. Have you, have you, right. No, I had lost two, so yeah, I yeah. get them back to it temporarily. You, you don't get them back, you just forget about them. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. so you <laughs> now have whatever you had before. Mm hmm. Uh, and your mind. And you gain. You, you gain forceful mind. So if you do anything to do with the Dreamlands, you will gain a bonus die. Uh, should it involve um, a, a check regarding power? And um, excellent, yeah. So Baines, this is a very strange room to be in, and there's a whole thing that you're going to have to try and take on board, looking at the woman herself. But your eye is immediately caught by a shimmering note, uh, a page torn out of what looks like maybe a private journal. Uh, written in a very fine hand, elegant hand, well educated, and you pick it up. I think this is right next to the magazine. It was a was a ripped out. Yes. Do you want me to read it out? If you would be so kind. Thank you. Ah, oh, here it is. 
Then, that deadly yet magnificent briar blade safely returned to the room atop the tallest tower. I proceeded to return here via the gate of fire, tickling at my toes and ankles like kisses. It is just such wonders as these, held in a terrible balance, that I am sure the children would so much adore. In writing this I realize all the more the greater truth of my longing for the children, that they might share the dreaming. I love those little beasts so much. I am quite sure I might not love anything so much as them in my whole life. Not music, not champagne, hmm. not even my dearest friends, no matter their charm or wit or even their gift in the dreaming art. Those young seekers are more to me even than those I walk with in my dreams, I am sure of it. I think more and more that the children are ready, that the white ships will be the time. Must remember to pick up plum pudding, parenthesis yum, colon, and then underscored, 4 p.m. at Goddard's, December 23rd, received the strangest letter, quite fevered, from Von K. If I didn't know better, I'd think he'd gone soft on me, really the most ardent outpourings of affection in my general direction. I can't fault her regarding his opinion except in one degree. It's all nonsense as to my good nature. I would have thought he knew. I am as terrible as the next modern girl. But I wonder if it might be wise to make my position clear. Some of what he says, well, it's more than suggestive. But maybe I'm losing something in that old-fashioned English of his. He speaks so well, I forget it's his not his first language. Spoke to Aunt Eleonora about Gunter, and she did that smile of hers that makes one feel like one has arrived at a fancy dress party, only to realize one is supposed to be dressed for dinner. She patted me on the hand and said, in that high-minded way she has, best put him out of his misery, the cheek of the old goose, as if I was doing anything. But now I am worried. What if I have misread his kindness to me? He really is like a father in my eyes, and could never be anything more. Oh, damn this silly body with its silly silken ways. Maybe I did dance a little by the fire, but I meant nothing by it, I'm sure. Oh, this eye, this damned eye. If I were there in Mits... Mits... Mitsividor, if I was there in Mitsividor, I would be the white maiden and all of this would be easy. I could crush such nonsense with a word. Maybe Gunther is right on that one point. Sometimes it is as if the dreaming king's sport is the better place, despite the green flame that grows stronger, despite the crawling things one can see just beyond the... and then an M-dash and nothing more. What could it all mean? So this, like the other journal uh, page, is ripped rudely um, and appears to have also been discarded. Uh, crucially, both of these items are outside of the circle that surrounds uh, Aunt Eleonora's bed. Uh, Aunt Eleonora is floating six foot above her bed, however, uh, in uh, a pose that can only be described as a body racked by pain and multiple breaks. She is an enormous woman. Um, she's floating in a sort of semi-upright position. Her wrist is sort of snapped at that angle. Her arm is snapped at this angle. Her neck is broken. Uh, her eyes are open and you can see one is flickering. Uh, and then as you're there, this wrist snaps again. And as the wrist snaps, she screams in this wild scream, unlike anything you've ever heard. So it's something between song and uh, incantation uh, and uh, things sort of rush under her skin as if she has creatures living inside of her in that moment and they sort of rush through and underneath like many uh, eels perhaps uh, uh, but this eye is flickering at you and she's very clearly alive even though her neck is at this impossible angle and her arm is at this wicked, crooked angle. Crooked, in fact, is the word. She has become this crooked mass of of snapping and twisting, and it is vile to see. Egad. Great Scott. Uh, great Scott. Could you, could you give me a sanity check? 